Well, I just had lunch with an old friend of mine, and uh, you know, we talked mostly about personal things and uh, you know what we've been up to. But we 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 usually talk about politics also, and uh, we talked uh, about education a little bit. And he wanted to know he has a girlfriend who's a liberal, and she's always, you know, she's always coming up with her great arguments as to why uh, capitalism sucks and why we need the government. And obviously, one of them is education. You know, and the education's so expensive, and uh. I <laughs> this I could make it the same video on probably ten different topics, but it's interesting because uh, the liberals out there and even the conservatives will go and they'll point out something that, that uh, a symptom that could very easily be a real problem, like healthcare is too expensive or education is too expensive, and then rather than have any kind of diagnostic as to well why is it so expensive, what's the cause? Of healthcare being expensive, or or of uh, education, or any number of other causes, they'll just come up with, well, let's try this as a solution. Uh, so, in the case of students, it's, it's going to be some kind of either direct or indirect subsidy. Uh, to the point, we're getting to the point now where there's people calling just for the government to pay for all of it. Uh, after all, Europe does that, and we all know we should emulate them as much as possible. That's after all why we came here because we liked it so much there uh, bad use of the term we but uh, yes healthcare is or gosh I guess we could in this video we could I could substitute healthcare and education interchangeably but I'm gonna keep it on on education uh, education is very expensive and if we go you know if you if you talk to your parents or your grandparents and they went to college and you ask how much uh, it cost uh, even accounting for inflation, which of course is a government problem, uh, it's vastly, vastly more expensive. I remember talking to my uncle, and he told me he took out one student loan for seventy-five dollars, <laughs> and this would have been in the mid '70s, probably seventy-five dollars. <laughs> and it wasn't like he was paying for his entire school with that; he had a job and everything. But that was to cover the shortfall. Uh, when I, the last time, my last semester in school, I didn't take any student loans. I paid for that semester all of money I made, but I actually applied for student loans in case I was going to need them, and I got accepted. And for that one semester, or perhaps that one year, I'm, I'm not sure now, I got approved for $27,000. <laughs> uh, and uh, that was from one loan agency this is before they were all nationalized and that was for one year so four years I guess would have been a hundred more than a hundred thousand dollars just for an undergraduate degree in anything not becoming a doctor or a lawyer where you expect a high rate of return once you're done just anything um, so why why is why is it so much well obviously because the government subsidizes it you know if the if the government um, <laughs> diverts rivers of money into an industry uh, it doesn't uh, immediately increase the supply but what it will do is it will increase demand and uh, if supply can be changed eventually you'll get more suppliers and they'll, there might be some hope of competition so the example uh, I like is if tomorrow Obama gave a speech and he said it's part of the American dream to have a riding lawnmower it's unfair for poor people to have to push a lawnmower and watch their rich neighbors sit around on a nice uh, John Deere. So I'm going to give uh, low interest loans or no interest loans or just grants to whoever qualifies, you know, poor people or whatever. Uh, if right now a, a nice particular lo riding lawnmower costs $2,000, uh, suddenly there's going to be more people who can afford them and they're going to have five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 in loans possibly. <laughs> or even if it's even smaller amounts and what's going to happen is the price is going to get bid up and suddenly instead of two or three thousand uh, dollars riding lawnmowers are going to be five or six or seven or eight or ten thousand dollars now this uh, will be mitigated slightly because if there's suddenly more money to be if there's suddenly this great demand for riding lawnmowers then John Deere will start making more Mitsubishi will start making more other entrepreneurs will start making more and there might be some price competition 
But if you can't have any more new ones, uh, if there's a restriction on new suppliers, then that process, <coughs> if it's not totally stopped, will be retarded. And uh, with universities, there is the accreditation hurdle uh, that exists, that it's extremely difficult to get accreditation. In fact, as far as I'm aware, really the only way to do it economically is to find a school that had it, that has that it's completely bankrupt, that's failed, and to buy that school and then just inherit their accreditation. That's pretty much the surest way to do it. The actual formal way to do it uh, is immensely costly and long, and there's no guarantee you can even get it because there's certain ideological uh, barriers you have to jump through. That uh, if you, I mean, if you wanted to start free market university, you almost certainly not get accredited, or it'd be very, very costly. So. Uh, I don't know the history of exactly when, but uh, I mean, in a limited scale, the federal government, at least with the GI Bill, if not before, began subsidizing certain types of education. But always the hue and cry has been, it's not fair that only rich people get it, which is never true. There always have been poor people who have been able to afford it if they thought it was really something that would be useful for them. Uh, this is slowly growing to the point when I was in college, and I started in 2002, uh, anybody who wanted to, anybody who got accepted could get as many loans as necessary. And uh, there's absolutely, this, I mean, this is literally insane. Um, it's not elitist to say that, not to say that, you know, everybody shouldn't go to school. I mean, not everyone should go to school. And I'm not saying uh, that, oh, it's only for the smart people. If you... <laughs> It's very costly to go to school, and if you do a cost-benefit analysis and your likely return when you're done is not going to pay off the debt, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and to so just go at like the last year of high school, or last couple years of high school, uh, no. And so what has this done? It's bit up the price, but it's also lower the quality because there's just more and more students, and you know they don't... They, they have to have lowering standards. When I was in school, all the teachers always complained that standards were going down. I was kind of like, well, you're the teachers. Can't you uh, do, you know? And there was certainly grade inflation. Uh, basically, you know, the, the kind of myth is that uh, getting a four-point or, or A's or really good grades is uh, some kind of really, that's hard, but... Uh, not in, uh, and this is certainly not true in every curriculum or in every school all the time. I'm not going to generalize that much, but typically, at least in many schools and especially in the more general classes and even all the way up, depending on what degree it's in, just doing okay is a four point. Uh, and I had students who they explicitly thought, hey, if you just turn in the assignment on time, it doesn't matter if it's any good, you're supposed to get a four point. And I remember once... We had a teacher who didn't do that, who would, if you did everything okay, you got it in all time, that was a 2.0. And man, there was hell to pay when that happened. Uh, I don't know why. They have tenure, so they can't get fired really for doing this. Um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, that, that teacher apparently did it all the time. And all through college, I think I had maybe three teachers like that. Maybe three. All the other ones, it's hey, you just do your time and you'll get a decent grade, even a good, even a perfect grade. And getting a four point is like, it's, it's like no, no big deal. And I, I mean, I had a friend in the high sciences who triple majored, he's a doctor now. And uh, he basically said, getting a four point doesn't mean anything. For him to get into graduate school, he knew that he was going to have to, just as a base, get a four point. And then he was going to have to have extracurriculars up the butt. I mean, he did, and he did. I mean, he was a track athlete. He was in drama. He was in band. He could do everything. He was a really smart guy. And he did all this extra stuff in multiple fields. Like, like I'm saying, he triple majored, and they were all high science stuff. You know, he didn't get an English degree or something, or, or not to single that out, but... Uh, and he just knew just getting a four point wouldn't be enough because there's so many people in it. And I don't know, teachers can't get fired for giving bad grades, at least after they get tenure. So I don't know why this has happened, but it has. Maybe they're just so overwhelmed they feel like they can't do it. 
you know. They probably respond to social pressure too. If they get pissy and moany students all the time, they probably succumb and just say, oh, I'll help out. So, uh, but it's, it's much more than this. Uh, it's, and, and this is, in a broader sense, this applies to all government spending. You know, it's, the spending causes a misallocation of resources. Uh, every college town that I'm familiar with, that I you know know the layout, and I've been there a couple times, so that I know when things have changed. So this is like my hometown, the place where I went to school. Uh, a couple of towns I live, like the town I lived in Texas. A couple of the towns that I drive through are college towns. There has been an explosion of off-campus student housing uh, that boggles even my mind and it was happening when I was in school and probably been happening before I was in school now if you if you ask like your parents you know when they they, they probably lived in the dorms and the dorms were like uh, not that nice of a place they're cramped not very many amenities now it's true in most universities many of the dorms are still there I went to a huge university and it hasn't had a new dorm built since the 50s or perhaps the very early 60s but now they have Wi-Fi and gyms, and uh, the, the the university, even though they can't build stuff into the dorms, have built other facilities uh, that make it more amenable. But if they didn't live in the dorms, they would go find the cheapest room they possibly could at some some house or some apartment, and they're living really, really, really cheap, and like eating beans and you know pork and beans and rice and beans, and uh, you know they. Unless they were wealthy, they didn't live. They lived on a very small budget, and and they probably had a job, and they worked at least part time and maybe full time. And uh, that still happens. When I was in, after I got done living in the dorms, I picked the cheapest place I could find within walking distance of where my school was, which turned out being three miles away. And my room was, I think it was eight by nine by six, or. No, eight by nine by seven. So the ceiling was about a foot taller than I was, and I could I could put out my arms and touch all the walls. <laughs> there is there is no. I, I'm not nine feet, but if I stuck out my leg and stretched out, I could I, I could touch. It was very small. My I had to have a, a bunk bed basically, a loft, and uh, otherwise there wouldn't be room for a desk and a computer. And I certainly wasn't the only person who lived like that. And then I worked full time the whole time. But a lot of my friends and some of my relatives, they were staying in these nice apartments that were six, seven hundred dollars a month, even a thousand dollars a month. Two or three rooms, two or three bathrooms, flat screen TVs, uh, new furniture, balconies, uh, and they didn't even have jobs. And how did they pay for this? Well, in the case of my relatives, it's because they were had wealthy parents who were willing to pay for it all. And I, you can't begrudge somebody if your parents want to pay for it. But a lot of students, a lot of people who are living in those facilities, they didn't have rich parents. They had enormous amounts of debt. They were spending thousands of dollars per month to live in really nice accommodations. And the fact that they have all this money available to them has caused... Uh, resources to switch. So if you go around college towns now, I've noticed this. I'm sure I'll get comments of people who noticed it as well. Huge student housing developments. These aren't that the schools run, that uh, entrepreneurs and contractors are building these enormous. I mean, the ones at the school I went to and the one I go through, because there's there's a town I drive through a lot that has a college. It's amazing. They're they're like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of acres. Some of them are thousands of acres. The land used to be farmland or forest, uh, and now it's just these enormous, basically apartment playgrounds for students. And they've got gyms and pools and like movie theaters and uh, concessions, like party stores. And all the rooms are very nice and they're very plush and they're very comfortable. And a large percentage, I have no idea how much, they're just getting it through debt. And if it wasn't for all the loans, uh, these places wouldn't be there. They'd be much smaller. And people say, well, what's the problem? Now we have all these new new buildings. Well, the problem is those contractors who built those buildings, the electricians who wired them, the people who build the appliances that go in them. Uh, because their services were bid away to build this, anyone else who wanted to use them had to pay more. So if you wanted to build an extension to your house, 
and you go to the contractor and you say, I would like you to build a garage or another room or another house altogether, and they say, well, we'll be happy to do that, but we can make a ton of money building these student houses, so we'll be happy to help you, but you're going to have to pay enough to make it worthwhile. If that stuff wasn't being built, then the, the bidding price would be lower. And so the, the hidden, the unseen, as Bastiat would say, is that everybody else who wants to use those same services, which is all, every type of construction, and of course all the appliance, the consumers of power as well, the electrical bill, they all have to pay more. Uh, including the students who graduate, if they ever, ever have enough money to pay down enough debt to get another loan to buy a house, <laughs> uh, they're going to have to pay more for all the construction. The house will cost more in the first place. Any additions they make are going to come out. And I'm just, that's just part of it. The other part is they just uh, demolished uh, thousands of acres of farmland or hundreds of acres of farmland. So that's going to bid up the price by reducing the supply of whatever was cultivated there before. Whether it's dairy cows or, I mean, where I'm from, it's going to probably just be corn and wheat, maybe asparagus or something. But I mean, even that, that's something. A couple thousand acres of corn just gone uh, so we all can pay more for that and then there is the inflation in the degrees the degrees just aren't worth as much anymore it's not like something you hang on your wall and you're like wow you're educated now it's like yeah I passed kindergarten uh, it's not that bad yet I know when I applied for a job I was told hey not many people have college degrees and I was considered overqualified even though I have a more or less worthless degree and at least I thought thought so and uh, what you know he just my the guy the guy who hired me said well there's just not many people in this who have college degrees that's changing though because now all my co-workers do have college degrees uh, and uh, as time goes on this is gonna I mean they're they're destroying the value of all all degrees out there uh, through the subsidy, they're, it's it's the classic egalitarianism. That you're, they're giving it to everybody, and the, the 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 result is that it's not worth anything anyway once you get it. Um, so there has been, and then I mean, like universities today seem to me, and like again, I don't want to be too general. There's differences between the di the various institutions and within programs within institutions. And even within individuals within the program, uh, I think of them primarily as base, basically being vacation places for young adults. You get done with college, you get done with high school, and you don't want to live with your parents anymore. So you go and uh, spend four or five years, or six or seven years now. Which is that, the other th other thing I've I've been told is that the uh, the length of time people spend in university is has has grown. And, you know, so the four year is kind of, that's unusual. I, I've heard the average is now five, which means there, there are six and sevens. And I know, uh, <laughs> uh, you go and there's, there's a nice bar scene. Uh, the university has all this athleticism, all these sports games that you can go to basically for free or at low cost if you're a student, cause it's subsidized cause the taxpayers pay for a new, <laughs> new stadium probably, uh, and uh, there's nice rec centers, there's gyms, there's pools, uh, and there's lots of people your age, and it's just like a good place to go hang out for a couple of years. And oh yeah, by the way, you might get a degree also. Uh, you know, the schools, money is no, the cliche if you go back 50 years is that the schools are penny pinchers, right? That you go to the library and there's no air conditioning, there's no heat, uh, there's probably mouse traps in the corner. If you go to the cafeteria at the dorm, it's going to be, uh, you know, very low quality food. It's going to be an old lady in a hairnet and a huge pot with a bunch of beans in it, and it's not going to be all that palatable. Now it's uh, these big, plush, huge air-conditioned buildings with big spaces, and like the desks have leather seats. And I remember when you ate the dorm, like they'd have rigatoni or they'd have a guy making sandwiches or a buffet or I mean or steak or I mean it wasn't the best steak you could always go out on the market and get something better uh, but hi high quality food not the cliche like oh god the uh, lunch lady uh, no like food was definitely palatable you could get really fat eating good food 
uh, in a nice cat. I mean, the cafeterias, man, I was in, they had couches and like I said, flat, not just TVs, flat screens, big flat screens, you know, with Xboxes and <laughs> just opulence, 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 opulence. And, and it's one thing if you have the money and you like the luxuries and you pay for it, but it's another thing if you just borrow for all of it, uh, the, then <laughs> you don't borrow to go on vacation. You don't borrow for luxuries. You know, at least not as a habit, and not for four years in a row or five. So, uh, I'm glad I'm done with the whole thing. Uh, it's not about learning. I certainly wasn't. Uh, the other like myth was that it's this really intellectually stimulating thing, and it almost never ever was. The very few times we got into class discussions that were actually even remotely stimulating. The teacher would have to stop and say, well, actually, you know, we have a curriculum and we have a, uh, a schedule we have to go through and, and I have to test you all, you know. And, and, and so there was very few, I mean, what intellectual stimulation there was was always outside of class. And you can get that anyway. You don't have to go to class to do that. You don't have to be in school to, to have that happen. Uh, and maybe, I mean, we all, I only have my experience my direct experience drawn, but uh, that's that's my take on it. Uh, it wasn't that intellectually. Experience. I mean, there's a big library that nobody would uh, go and read books in except for what they had to for class, and the classes aren't designed to be stimulating. They aren't designed to make you smarter or make you think better. So, I mean, the only people I know who have claimed that uh, the education really stimulated them is people who became socialists, and I just then you were not really being stimulated. You're being retarded, basically. So, yes, horribly discard, horribly distorts the economy, and and society, and it's of enormous cost. And the reason is the government. Plain and simple. Government caused the problem, and unfortunately, I although education's not as pressing as healthcare has been, uh, we can expect the government to solve this problem as well. Which means we all have to look out for trouble.